Welcome back to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Thank you for staying with us. Traditional masquerade was a community-led activity. However, in present day, its dances and music are witnessed most commonly for stage performances and at organized events depicting St. Lucian culture. Producer of the Youth and Arts Theatre Company, June Frederick, says that she fears for the survival of the art form. No longer depicted in its true form, she says masquerade has been subject to adaptation to more urban standards. The one thing that is really concerning me right now, however, is the music of the masquerade. Um, a lot of our musicians have died and um, we will be just very worried. We um, are trying now to get the music in studio because um, there is an authentic trill of the flute and the roll of the drums that you cannot get from a machine-oriented piece of music, which is what is going on the airwaves now. Frederick says the survival of the art form has been supported by the introduction of theatre arts in schools as many young people have become involved in participating in traditional performances. Well, I think I have to thank especially the, the teachers of the theatre art students at the secondary schools because they are the ones who really push the, the interest in the different aspects of culture and a lot of the kids are actually very interested in masquerade, traditional masquerade for their theatre arts program and thank God for that because now it has enabled me to attract a lot more youngsters to play on the road. In an effort to encourage public involvement in masquerade, Frederick will host a mass camp at the Gable Woods Mall on Saturday, where the general public is invited to learn how to make masquerade costumes, as well as learning the dance moves from professional masqueraders. One year after embarking on a twinning program, Mayor Peter St. Francis is joined by Chairman of the Mayaro Rio Claro Regional Corporation, Glen Ram. The twinning sees him liaising with mayors from neighboring islands in a bid to exchange ideas as well as to grow stronger together. The mayor of Castries, Peterson Francis, is playing host to the chairman of the Mayaro Rio Claro Regional Corporation, Glenn Ram, of Trinidad and Tobago and is making good on a promise which he made just over a year ago to pave the way for better relations between cities and townships in St. Lucia and the Twin Island Republic. Around the same time in 2018, Mayor Francis paid a visit to Trinidad where he attended a series of meetings aimed at making progress in mayoral diplomacy and strengthened relations with Trinidad and Tobago along with opportunities for investment. Speaking about his time on island thus far, Ram said his visit formalizes the process that began last year. We have started just initial discussions in terms with, with Mayor and this morning I had the opportunity of visiting the Honorable Minister of Local Government at his office and um, we have started discussions in terms of how this approach will take place and how we intend to move forward and one of the areas that we are really looking at is in terms of investment opportunities for the Street St. Lucia um, coming into this area so that's one of the major aspects and also we're going to have discussions in terms of the way how the local government system is running Trinidad and compared to St. Lucia and some of the ideas that I might take from from Castries to my region. Ram said once the process is formalized they will now be able to officially begin turning their plans into a reality. It's actually for us to start the ball are rolling so to speak in terms of some of the projects we have the initiatives I said we have some projects that we are willing to come into St. Lucia with so um, I will not um, detail it at this time but you will see some things happening and um, so we'll have further discussions with me on that issue. Also too in terms of um, some of the systems of local government, we'll have discussions on that and so forth um, and exchange our ideas as it relates to the running of um, my municipality and also in Castro St. Lucia. For his part, Mayor Francis said he is hoping to restore the faith in St. Lucians by St. Lucians and he believes by twinning with Trinidad, both nations can learn a lot from each other. What we want is a solution. We can't do it alone. And we Caribbean people, we don't believe in our own Caribbean people. We always believe from outside. Um, when you talk about tourism, we are, we are not concentrating on, I mean, our own Caribbean people. As far as we're concerned, they don't have money. You understand? But, I mean, these things could be developed. Trinidad now is trying the best with the tourism. I mean, Tobago. I know that they lost a big project with Sandals, again with politics. 
So mm. these are the things we are looking. These are things we want to build. Mayor Francis's trip to Trinidad and Tobago formed part of his strategy to build strong partnerships in an effort to improve and develop the city of Castries from an economic and security perspective. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. The Feed the Poor Ministry is offering assistance to school dropouts who are struggling to find their place in society. This development in the ministry's dropout prevention program seeks to reintegrate dropouts into the regular workings of society. CEO Gaspar Henry spoke with Hot 7 on the importance of the initiative. Statistics show that in 2015, St. Lucia recorded a 2.2% dropout rate, a figure which CEO of Feed the Poor Ministry, Gaspar Henry, says is much too high. Henry says that his ministry has spearheaded several efforts to counsel and provide support for would-be dropouts at the Castries Comprehensive, Corinth Secondary and the Boys Training Center, allowing them to complete their schooling. The most recent venture of the Feed the Poor ministry has been reaching out to persons who have already dropped out and providing them with much-needed assistance. It is a very, very, very serious situation and um, everybody has to play their part. It has to be tackled from a, a holistic standpoint of view. But as for me, in my own way, I try my best to encourage, to motivate, to build up the dropouts that may come my way in the Castries Central Basin and in my community, New Village, on the whole. The Feed the Poor Ministry is prepared to provide in various areas of need, from clothing to employment. Henry says that there are currently many avenues for persons to receive help but they first need to be willing to ask for assistance. Help doesn't just come to people, you know. People have to first realize that they need help and they know where to find me, you see, because they have to come forward and admit they need help. And when you see you admit that you need help, you, you, you admit that, that you have a problem, help will come your way. So first, I am, I am a channel for, 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 for positive change and they know where to find me. Henry urges persons to be accepting of individuals who have dropped out of school, as they are still very capable of becoming functional members of society. For Hot 7 News, I am Jacques Ouding. Prime Minister Alan Shastney has declared his support for youth advocacy efforts on the issue of climate change. Following international youth protests led by activists such as Greta Thunberg, Shastney says it is prime time for the youth to take a stance in ensuring the sustainability of the world that they are to inherit. Over the past year, youth activists around the world have emerged as a powerful voice in the climate change movement. Millions of students have joined marches, protests and strikes in over 185 countries, demanding that nations act quickly and aggressively to fight global warming. Prime Minister Alan Shastny says that this has been a necessary development in the fight against climate change. Shastny says that he stands with the youth who have chosen to exercise their right to advocate this issue and urges St. Lucian students to follow suit. I think that Guterres and the young people of this world need to really be applauded. And I'm really hoping that my young people, uh, my youth, I'm looking at you all directly, are going to get involved and engaged. Um, I, I support the idea of a school strike. I support anything that um, reminds your government and the world how important this issue is. He emphasizes that regardless of which administration is in office, the resolution of issues voiced by the youth should be of utmost priority. The slogan that best exemplifies that is a slogan that says, you're going to die of old age and I'm going to die of climate, climate change. Yeah? yeah? And so there is nothing more motivating for a young person to be involved. And I would really like to see <coughs> my youth understand the issue, understand the urgency of the issue, um, and I don't see it as undermining the government. What I see it as strengthening whatever government is in office, that the population is put this as a top priority to be able to resolve. Chastney says that his administration is ready and willing to bolster youth development in the international climate change movement as necessary. For Hot 7 News, I am Jacques Ouding. Thank you, Jacques. 
CARICOM member states say the economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed by the United States on Cuba is impeding regional development as a whole as the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution for the 28th consecutive year calling for an end to the sanctions. During a vote on Wednesday, 187 UN member states underlined their support for the resolution, while Brazil and Israel joined the U.S. in voting no. Two countries, Colombia and Ukraine, abstained. During presentations ahead of the vote, the 15 members of CARICOM highlighted Havana's support to the region. Cuba has deployed medical professionals to distressed areas, including those affected by natural disasters, among other initiatives. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Tennyson Glasgow is up next with all the sporting action.